Let's play a game. I want you to identify some objects, but I will not show you any pictures. All you have to do is listen. Ready? So here it goes. Oh, that's... Ah. Ah. And finally, oh, let's get to the side. So, do you have your answers ready? Let's check them then. The first was a train whistle. Very loud. <laughs> and then that was unmistakably a baby cry. There's the thunder. Wow, that's water splashing about. And finally, that was a vehicle on an emergency call. I'm sure you got five on five, but how could you identify all of these objects without seeing them? Simple, you'll say. After all, you recognize the sound so well, right? And that's what we'll talk about today. Sound. Sound plays a very important role in our lives. Don't we recognize our favorite superstars simply from their voices? We know the sound of a school bell and if we hear it ring, we rush to our classes. We can identify different singers and musicians. We can hear birds and animals and thousands of other distinct sounds. So what is sound? In physics, sound is a form of energy that produces the sensation of hearing in our ears. But how exactly is this sound produced? Here's a little experiment that you can do. So, you know that every time you speak, you're producing a sound, right? And you also know that there is something called the larynx or the voice box which is present inside your throat that is responsible for the production of sound. Now just say something, anything. And while you say it, keep your fingers gently on your throat like this. Uh, once you do this, you will feel something against your fingers. Whenever you're speaking, as if something rapidly is moving inside your throat, in fact, as I keep talking to you, I can still feel the vibration under my fingers. Ah, vibration. Yes, that's the word I use to describe the sensation I get beneath my fingers when I've placed them on my throat while speaking. Whenever you have an object that shows rapid to and fro motion, it is said to vibrate. So if you're feeling something vibrate beneath your fingers when you speak, do you know what this means? It means that this vibration that's happening inside your larynx or voice box is the reason why you're able to produce sound and speak. Basically, the air that we breathe in and release while talking is the air that causes the vocal cords present inside the larynx to vibrate. And that is a gist of how we humans produce sound. So, are you a fan of rock music? I am. Have you ever seen someone play the guitar? If you look closely, they pluck the strings of the guitar to make them vibrate. And as soon as the strings vibrate, they produce a sound. That's an example of production of sound where you're able to see vibrations. But what if you can't see this guitar and you're probably hearing an audio recording of someone playing the guitar and singing a song? Say you're sitting at home and you turn on the music player but the volume level is set way too high. You'll actually feel, you know, the light objects and even the chair vibrate as the music blares on. That's when you're able to feel the vibrations. In fact, if you look closely at the speaker, you'll see the membrane of the speaker also vibrating as it emits sound. Do you want to get a little creative and build your own instrument? Don't worry, it's very easy. Just take a hardbound book or a pencil box and put a rubber band around it. Next, take two pens and insert them between the surface of the box and the rubber band at the two ends of the box like this. Now just pluck this rubber band at the middle and let it go. What do you see? 
you see that as you pluck the rubber band, it starts vibrating and produces a sound. This again confirms the fact that sound is produced due to objects that vibrate. But these are all examples where you can visibly see or feel the vibrations. What about an instrument like the flute? You can't see any string being plucked, but you can still hear the sound, right? So what kind of vibrations are causing this sound? Here's what happens in these cases. Whenever air is blown into the flute, it causes the air molecules inside the flute to vibrate. And this vibration of air molecules is something we can't see. But it still produces a sound that we are able to hear. So any kind of sound is produced as a result of vibrations. Now we know how sound is produced due to vibrations. We felt a vibration in our throat while speaking. We saw the guitar strings vibrating when the guitar player plucked them. We built our own instrument and saw a sound being produced by a rubber band. And we also found out how the vibrating air molecules produce sound in a flute. But how does sound actually reach our ears? When you talk to your friend, how is he able to hear what you're saying when he's not physically connected to you in any way? In fact, how are you able to hear what I am telling you right now? This is because sound travels from the source, that is from the place where it's produced, to the receiver through a substance or matter. This substance or matter through which sound is transmitted is called a medium. This medium could be solid, liquid or gaseous. Now, how exactly does this sound travel? So this is what happens when an object vibrates. It causes the particles surrounding it to vibrate too. Take the example of the rubber band instrument that we built. Now the moment you pluck the rubber band, it starts vibrating. This vibrating rubber band will cause the particles of air around it to vibrate too. But these air particles will themselves not move in the forward direction. So if you consider just one of these air particles that is in direct contact with the vibrating rubber band, you know that it will start vibrating with the rubber band. As soon as it starts vibrating, it exerts a force on the adjacent particle, causing that particle to vibrate. Now once the second particle is vibrating, the first particle goes back to rest. Then it is the job of the second particle to exert a force on the third particle and cause it to vibrate and this goes on. So the vibration travels from one particle to another and finally reaches the listener. Reminds you of dominoes, doesn't it? You just have to push one domino, which falls and pushes the one next to it, which in turn falls and pushes the one after it. And this goes on till the end of the chain. How interesting is that? Let's go a little deeper into this concept. So the vibration or the disturbance that is generated is traveling through the medium by setting the particles of the medium into vibration. And these particles then make their neighboring particles vibrate. This movement of a disturbance through a medium when the particles of the medium set the neighboring particles into motion is called a wave. So what basically move forward are not the particles themselves, but the disturbances that they transfer from one particle to another till the disturbances or the vibrations reach the listener. And this is basically what happens in the case of sound as well, which is why we can actually visualize sound in the form of a wave propagating through a medium. But what kind of waves are these sound waves? Tutor me for more amazing video lectures.
download the free app on the Apple App Store or the Google Play Store.